Well, the new uh, replacement solenoid came in and we're going to install that today and get the uh, go-kart running again. But we're also going to finish the wiring for the uh, choke circuit that we started working on. And in order to get that choke circuit to work correctly, we're going to have to wire in the voltage regulator that we never got around to doing. Once we finish doing this, if it all works correctly, we're going to have the ability for the choke to work correctly. And we should also have charging capability of the battery. Right now, we just haven't been worried about recharging the battery because it's just, you know, a good charge on that battery with no lights running on the thing. Basically, that thing could start, you know, well, probably over 100 times without a hitch. So this is the generic cheapo um, voltage regulator that I got off of uh, eBay or, or Amazon. I don't even remember. I actually ordered this quite a while back and just never got around to installing it. So this says 1PZ, that's actually the part number. And there is absolutely no paperwork that came with it and not even a wiring diagram on the box. This is a very generic voltage regulator. So um, if you Google GY6 four pin voltage regulator or anything even close to that, you can find a whole bunch of different pinouts uh, for this voltage regulator. So when you're looking at most of the pinouts, they show the pinout as looking at the plug this way. So I just made a couple of notes here and compared various ones that I found to see if they were all going to be pretty much the same. And they are. They just use different terminology. So for instance, this one here says that the uh, upper left pin is supposed to go to the 12 volt battery so that means this is going to be the voltage output dc voltage output for charging the battery at rest the battery is going to be like 12 point some odd volts volts somewhere around like 12.6 12.7 in order for this to charge the battery has to see more voltage being forced into it so when it's charging, there should be over 13 volts present at this point. So we should get, you know, the battery voltage here when it's not running. And then when the engine's running, if the magneto's doing its job and the regulator circuit's doing its job, we'll get a higher voltage here, slightly higher. And uh, that, that's what charges the battery. Um, this uh, connection right here, they're calling this the mag coil almost all instances are saying that that's going to be white diagonally across from that one is the other mag coil and they're calling that yellow in most situations and the lower right is ground that's easy that one's going to have to go to the frame somewhere it's going to have to go to the ground circuit that's a real simplistic one this one i kind of like because they actually kind of tell you exactly what's going on here. In other words, this upper left one is going to go to the battery, like I said on this one. But notice now they're saying this is the positive pole of the power supply. Well, what they're really talking about is they're talking about the battery. They're talking about the battery circuit, the 12 volt positive of the battery. This lower right, they're saying for DC ignition coil white. Okay, that's because on some of these units, they're using, they don't have a separate, uh, apparently they don't have a separate coil, like on the, on this particular unit, there's a separate coil to run the power to the CDI unit. But the uh, real telling thing is the top right pin, there, it's the, again, yellow wire, but they're calling it the DC illumination circuit so what they're telling you is that this is going to be the 12 volt output that is going to be regulated so as the engine revs this voltage should stay constant because this is for illuminating the headlights and if this voltage were to spike because if it wasn't regulating and this voltage goes up too high you're going to burn out your bulbs so that's the idea there and in our particular Yurf Dog Spider Box, this is also the circuit that runs the, the choke circuit, the enricher circuit, whatever you want to call it. This is going to be what that resistor is going to have to tie to. 
So that means that this pin should have no voltage on it when the uh, Yurf dog's not running. Because remember, I talked about that if that's hooked up, if we hook up that resistor to this side, then it's going to just drain the battery down and, it, and it's going to just be using power all the time. So the battery will go dead just sitting there. So we want that to be on this side. Lower right, negative pole of power supply, a.k.a. ground. And they're saying it's a green wire here. It could be green, it could be black. So this is a no-brainer. This is going to be black. This is a no-brainer. This is going to be red going to the battery through a fuse, by the way. And then um, we're going to have two wires coming off of that magneto that, that we haven't used yet. Uh, a yellow one and a white one. And that they're going to go here. And by the way, what's coming out of the yellow and white wires? AC voltage. So what this thing does, it's commonly called a regulator. But in fact, what this is, is a combination rectifier regulator. It's going to take the AC voltage input and it's going to turn it into 12 volt DC. But it's going to let us look at two different 12 volt DCs. It's going to let us look at a regulated 12 volt DC and an unregulated 12 volt DC. And that's the, the beauty of this little doohickey here. Because we need that unregulated 12 volt DC to charge the battery and we want the regulated 12 volt DC to run everything else. All right, so just installed, physically installed the new uh, solenoid and uh, getting ready to do the electrical on it. And the brand new solenoid that came in from China uh, was missing one of the two the two mounting nuts, the two two terminal nuts. So I had to go dig out. Luckily, I still had the uh, the old solenoid and uh, scrounged <laughs> a couple. So this thick wire right here goes to the starter. So this goes on one of the two posts. It doesn't matter which one as long as the post that has the cable coming from the battery, as long as that post has the 12 volt or one of the two lines from the, the solenoid. So the solenoid came with a plug attached to it that is of no use to us. It probably would fit in some scooter wiring harnesses just perfectly. So I cut that off and I put a ring terminal on here. So now what that effectively does is that gives me 12 volts running to one side of the coil on the solenoid all the time. So that as soon as the other side of the coil is grounded, that completes the circuit, energizes the coil, closes the contacts and turns over the starter. Pretty simple. I do have the battery disconnected right now so I don't have any uh, unpleasant surprises. Shock? Well, it's not even a shock. It's only 12 volts. So, unless like I really am wet, it's kind of hard for a 12 volt go-kart battery to give you a good shock. It's like in Rambo First Blood Part 2 where they tie him to that metal yeah, box yeah. spring and they use a car battery and they're electrocuting him so violently that it doesn't quite make sense. They, wasn't that wasn't that the movie where they did that? Yeah. Yeah, that doesn't. I think that was three. Oh, okay. Well, regardless, Maybe that's when just doesn't went, work that way. I think that's when he went back to. Um, but drawing a huge arc and making a big burn mark on my wrench. Okay, so I just uh, connected the other end of the solenoid coil to this wire, which goes up to the starter button on the front. So now. Aiden just finished reconnecting up the battery. So we might as well just test to make sure this works. You gotta sit in it and put foot on the brake in case it does decide to start. It has no gas in it. I still, there might be gas in the carburetor. No, I don't I want it. Just do it. Okay, so now that works. So we get a good solenoid. So now we can finish wiring the regulator. I'm just getting my um, other battery. Okay. All right, so now I'm getting ready to run the, the uh, wiring to the regulator. So I'm gonna start with the easiest one first, the, uh, the ground. So I know from my, uh, my wiring chart that I found online, this lower right 
pin right here is going to be the ground. So I've already made up this little jumper of heavy black wire that's going to go right there. I'm using these covered um, quarter inch spade terminals because I don't have a plug. They don't sit, ship you a plug because they expect you to use the plug on the wiring harness and they expect it to fit. There was no wiring harness with this so I'm basically I'm recreating a plug by using four of these connectors. I'm using the covered ones so that they can't accidentally short against each other. So anyways, lower right, that's going to be my ground. Now, I know that this is my ground point right here. I put these three wires together because they're all tied together to the ground as is this side of the resistor. If I had planned ahead and known that I was going to do this, I could have actually also run this here. Since I didn't, and I don't want to cut these wires and redo this because this wire is already getting a little short on us. What I did was I made a little jumper with a uh, eye terminal, a ring terminal on the end. And what we're going to do with that is we're going to unbolt this bolt, which is the main ground on the motor, and add this to that. So we'll have a really good ground for the regulator circuit by doing that that way. So Aiden, what I need you to do is you need to unscrew this and add this on here and then tighten it back on. Okay. And then that'll be grounded as well as the rest of the circuit. All right, so now I wanna add the fuse that's been missing in this circuit this whole time. It may have been right in the wiring harness, the original one. So we haven't had a fuse anywhere in this circuit. Now it's time to put the fuse in and looking at the wiring diagram, the fuse should be between uh, this 12 volts going out to the starter solenoid. So the way that I have it right now, even if this, even if I wire this in and this fuse were to trip, which I'll get to that in a second, um, the starter could still crank. So it's not really protecting that part of the circuit. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to redo this. I'm going to take this wire coming from the starter solenoid coil off of here and I'm gonna attach it to the other side of the fuse. I don't have a fuse. It's supposed to be a 10 amp from what I read online. Uh, I have this circuit breaker, which will do the trick. I'm hoping it's a seven amp. I don't think it's gonna be a problem. If it sporadically trips, then it would indicate that it's not heavy enough and I'll have to find a 10 amp to put in there or just add in an inline fuse holder and put a 10 amp fuse in there, which I could do later. For the time being though, I wanna have some protection in there. This'll, this'll give us some protection. So we're gonna undo this. We're gonna cut this off. Actually, I can, I can just cut this off now. All right, so that's the 12 volt from the battery. So we're gonna have to be careful. We can try and do this without having to disconnect the battery again, since it's such a pain the way it's down there. All right, so now I took the coil wire that I originally had running directly over to the positive, uh, the, the battery terminal side of the solenoid. And I've got that going to this, which now is gonna go to this side of the fuse. I'm gonna leave it disconnected for now because there's 12 volts there right now because I'm going to now run this other end of this wire over to the battery terminal on the regulator. Now the 12 volt battery connection on the regulator is diagonally across from the ground one that I just put on, which means it's the, looking at it from the back here, it's gonna be this upper left one. Okay. What are the other two for? The other two go to the magneto. These two wires right here that we never connected before, the white one and the yellow one. So we just need, which color do you want them? Uh, well, I'm gonna have to find a piece of yellow wire. That's the only thing I don't have. Here's white. So we can, we'll do this one now since I have it. it looks kind of thinner than the other ones. It is thinner. This is lighter gauge wire. It doesn't have to be as heavy coming from the magneto. Okay. There's the white wire from the magneto. The white wire from the magneto goes to the bottom left or right below where that red wire just went. Okay. Now, all we get left is the yellow wire, and then reconnect this, and we can test it. So I was about to run the yellow wire that I just spliced onto the magneto wire 
right directly over to that terminal on the uh, regulator and then I remembered oh that's also the same terminal that I need to run a wire over to this choke resistor so I'm going to actually run the magneto wire right over to the choke resistor and put the two watt put another piece of wire together with it use this as a junction point now actually if we had wires on the buggy right now, I mean uh, lights on the buggy right now, I would run a third wire, which is this wire, into here. And that runs up to the overhead lights. The problem is the overhead lights, one of them's completely broken off and the wires are just hanging out and the other one doesn't look so great either. So I'm not too keen about using that wiring. We're gonna get new ones. Well, you can still use this wiring going up though. Yeah, but wouldn't it short it out? Yeah, but we can disconnect it up there. I'm looking at it right now. It looks like those unplug. Yeah, they do. Let me check and see just to make sure. You sure? Because if they do unplug, I, I, I probably will run this. See? All right. So, great. So that wire is disconnected, so I should be able to safely put this here. But why is this so short? So now I have three wires going to this spade lug that's going to be on this end of the resistor. And one of these is going to go over to the regulator, and this one is going to go over to a connector that we can hook this wi uh, wiring for the lights in at a later date if we need to. Are you going to get a horn for this? Like a big, like a Uga horn? A train horn? Train horn, yeah. No, how about when it plays La Bamba? Ice cream truck horn, or the ice cream truck. No, what's that thing in um, Ant-Man, the guy's horn? I don't remember. Okay, so now we got the regulator all wired up. If you can believe it. Put some gas in it. And this go. wire right here. Is, make it go in anything just like this because it seems to want to go that way. Those terminals right there are actually made to have wires soldered to them. Yeah. So you put the wire through the hole and then you solder it but I ain't doing that. If we were to have a problem with this loosening up over time, we could do, oh, oh. we could do that. Oh, I might still be able to save it. Yeah, there we go, beautiful. All right, oh, yeah. If this was a house, it would probably burn down. <laughs> Why is this wire so long? Oh, we had it long. From before? Yeah. Jeez. We can figure out a way, yeah. We'll do something with that wire later. All right, so this wire that's just gonna hang out here, eventually, this red wire will go there and send power up to the overhead lights. Even though we disconnected them up there, I haven't tested to see whether or not this is shorted to the frame somewhere. So this can just hang out here, that'll be fine. So now that I got all my wiring done, should be safe to hook this wire up to here which will send 12 volts over to the regulator Put this on later. all right it looks like something you got that army surplus I know what that sounded like in your head but you know what that sounded like when you said it what I don't know I was missing some words or something there was really really bad English that looks like something you got at the army surplus. It's better. <laughs> yeah. It's an old fluke meter. That was the color that these cases were back then. They were gray. Oh, I saw the coolest thing today at the flea market. What? I didn't even ask the guy how much it was. I figured it was too expensive. It was a casing for a tow missile, which was an anti-tank missile that I used to fire when I was in the army. Yeah. Somebody had cut it down shorter to make it into a sign to hang out in front of a repair shop because the guy who was selling it actually worked at one of the companies that did work on those things for the army. At least that's what he said. All right, so I'm gonna start by checking the voltage on the battery. I got 12.5, 12.6 volts on the battery. Okay, so what we, know, what we wanna do now is we'll put some gas in this thing and we'll start it and we'll see what the battery voltage does. If the battery voltage goes up a little bit, then that means it's charging and this charging system's working. I'm gonna monitor the battery voltage. If we did this right, it should 
go up once the engine starts. The engine should start no problem because the choke should be in the cold start position. All right, so I got 12.6 volts on the meter. All right, give it a start. Give it a try. What? No? Try it again. Stop. This circuit breaker doesn't work. This circuit breaker is not working. All right. Huh. Thought it was a good one. Let me grab a uh, fuse I can throw in there. All right. I have these auto resetting type of fuses. This thing. What that is is that's like a fuse inside there that if it if it opens when it cools off it'll close again by itself. It'll reset automatically. Bad part is the smallest one I have is a 30 amp. So if you have a short, it's gonna be a pretty bad short before the fuse blows. The good news is it's got quarter inch lugs on it, so it'll plug right onto these spade terminals that I put on here. No Let's see if it cranks. Alright. So now we've got our uh, we've got everything hooked up. I got 12 and a half volts on the battery. Try and start it. You remember which way? I think it's down. Go ahead. Yeah, there you go. It's down. All right, let it idle. Got 12.6 volts at idle. Rub it up. So the good news is the voltage of the battery is going up to around 13 something when you rev the engine, which means it'll charge the battery as you're going along. That's the good news. But the voltage coming out of the regulator on the side that's supposed to go to this choke resistor, okay, is, all right, hold on. I think I just figured out what we did wrong. What? I'm putting 12 volts directly across the resistor without the, without the, the, the choke, uh, yeah, and circuit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There you go. That that's the problem right there. I found it. Okay. <laughs> what a moron! I hope I didn't ruin the regulator. Okay. So I mistakenly put 12 volts right to here, forgetting that the other side of this resistor is the is on the ground circuit. This is all. These are all grounds tied together right here. So I essentially was taking the regulator output and putting it directly across this 15 or 20 ohm resistor to ground, which is why this resistor was getting so hot. The way it's supposed to be is the heating element in this choke device on the carburetor actually is in series with the this resistor. So I need this to go here. Now that being said, I now want to check the resistance of that resistor and make sure I didn't cook it open. I also uh, hope that I didn't damage the regulator. All right, so my my resistor's still good. Luckily, we didn't run it long enough to burn out the resistor. So now I have to tie the other end of that choke to the 12 volt, and also to the stator lead, and our little jumper to go over to the lighting leader. If we had the light hooked up. We would have to shut off the ignition. What are you talking about? Yeah, I think it stays on when you put the ignition on. You think? Yeah. Well, then maybe if you leave the ignition on, it'll kill the battery too because of the choke circuit, if that's the case. I don't think so, though. The ignition, that ignition switch only activates the CDI. 
It shouldn't have anything to do with this. So it's going to drain the... No, the lights should not... Yeah, but that's the whole point of the way this is supposed to work. That's why there's two different... That's why we don't hook it up on the other side of the regulator. Because then the lights would, A, be on as long as there was juice in the battery. The lights would be on. B, as you rev the engine, the lights would get brighter. Which isn't supposed to happen. Although I doubt this regulator works that great anyways. Who knows? All right, so we're going to do this again, only this time. I'm going to look right at the voltage on the choke circuit to see whether or not that's looking horrible again. This is the voltage where it's coming out of the regulator and going through the resistor, uh, through the choke and the resistor. All right, go ahead. I can't hear you. Voltage still seems low there. Grab it. How did you bolt that on there? What? Oh, there's one of them I didn't tighten fully. It's horrible. So what was your plan? To just drive around until it just fell off? No, I was going to tell you after we were done with this. I was like, what the hell is that noise? Why would you not tighten it all the way? You got to have the correct tools, but you brought yours out here. And was oh, yours. brother. Start it again. Oh, my. Yeah, go ahead, start it again. Fix that because it's driving me crazy. Rattle, rattle trap. I know this thing's a jalopy, but does it have to sound like one too? Right, so I actually checked the mess of a wiring job that goes up to the lights up above. One of these lights actually seems like it might still be okay. The other light's completely missing, but since it's completely disconnected, I'm just going to cut the wires, the bare wires that are hanging out off. So that nothing can touch. And it actually should be safe to hook up that one light. Because Aiden really wants to drive one, one light on. I'm just curious whether or not it'll light. I, I mean, I'm, I'm measuring such a low voltage at that point. I don't see how it's going to light. It's interesting that the way this is designed, there is no light switch. The light is in the circuit all the time. You would think it would kill the battery. But it must be that the regulator is able to block voltage when the when the uh, when there's no AC input to it from the magneto. So when the engine's off, it must not allow it to back drain voltage from the battery. At least that's in theory. Believe it or not, the light was lit. Yeah, he's so excited. He's got a light. Look at him. Look at the smile on his face. I have a light! Yeah. <laughs> Let there be light. So the million dollar question is going to be whether or not the choke circuit's going to work correctly. I mean, right now it's stalling. Right? Probably gas. Mm, probably yeah. the gas. There's plenty of gas in there. Yeah, but how full did you put it, remember? It doesn't use all the gas for you. It doesn't use What do you Remember mean? Remember this, this lip right here? So you're thinking there's not enough gas in there. Mm -hmm. And why, how's it starting? What is it running off of to start? You. You're using fumes. This is the stupidest design. This bar is right in the way of where I want to put the funnel. If I put it here, I can't tilt it up far enough. I think you're just saying that to con me into putting more gas in this tank, that's all. I'm not you know, you know I'm not wasting my gas. It's so expensive these days. Alright, show me how it's going to run now because I added more gas. It's not going to run. Press the button and hold. It's 
stop. So, is this button bad now? This is something else going on. Yeah, I just moved that wire. You might have a bad connection on the back here. Could be that Chinese push button's gone bad from getting wet too. All right, so the question is now, when it warms up, will it shut that choke circuit off so that you can keep running it when it's hot? Mm. Well, the only way to find out is to drive it. You're gonna really leave that little GoPro fake on there? Cause I don't think it's gonna be very safe, but. I'm not driving right now, I need to put a helmet on. Huh? I need to put a helmet on. Yeah, and you're not wearing it. Yeah. You can't wear flip flops. You'll end up with a broken foot. In order to try not to have this to be a complete hack job of electrical work, I uh, put a zip tie on this voltage regulator so it's not just flapping around in there. And this exposed mess where the 12 volts comes into the whole system through this resettable fuse is exposed and flapping around. So first thing I'm gonna do is wrap some electrical tape around the terminals themselves and the fuse. Oh, that looks beautiful. A puff. Redneck. Oh. Huh? Looks like redneck. What's wrong with a redneck? Hey, look. I told you not to mix up your junky tools with mine. I did. Oh, all right. Oh, you know how I know these these are all mine? Because you didn't pick them up. Oh, wait a minute, though. You don't pick up your own tools either, so that doesn't mean anything. Never mind. So previously, what was happening was he'd only be able to ride it around the field like three, four times tops, and uh, it would die, and it would be really hard to restart because the engine was hot and the enricher circuit was still on because we didn't understand how it worked. Now that we have it wired correctly, hopefully, this thing will run correctly. Oh, how bright that light is! Ooh, that was blinding me. Actually, it's a surprisingly bright light for the size of the ball. Oh, need to get back to brush hogging again, I think. camera's low. I don't know how long this is going to stay on, but in case my battery dies, hope you guys enjoyed this episode. If you're not already a subscriber, please consider subscribing. Take care.